continue donating, but more importantly, keep resisting Mm. because that is the only way we're going to win this thing. And I can't stress this enough. I've spoken at a number of rallies. Uh, I'm pretty, uh, pretty firm on this. Take off your mask and just go out there and live your life without your mask. Most places you can get into and the ones that you really, really, really can't get into, believe me, they'll let you know. And you just don't go there. If you want to get into a, into a ticket scenario and filing with human rights, I mean, go ahead. If you, if you have the courage and the strength to do that, have at it. But otherwise, just take off your mask and live your life. When it comes to civil liberties in Canada, there is nothing sweeter right now than sweet victory on the side of freedom. Got another Fight the Fines win for you. You're going to want to sit down and enjoy the ride. Warning. Censorship. Warning. Censorship. Drea Humphrey here with Rebel News, and this is just a fun fight the finds to share with you. This is Paul Ignacic that you're looking at, and he was just doing what people should have the right to do, which is peacefully protest. And then you guys came together through donations at fightthefines.com. If you are not familiar with what that is, Rebel News has partnered with the Democracy Fund, a charity. And what we've done is we crowdfund, we encourage you guys to donate, and then the funds go there so that they can pay top-notch lawyers from across the country to defend everyday Canadians, not lawbreakers, just freedom lovers who want to be left alone in court. And in this story, you're not going to want to miss it. You're going to meet one of those lawyers. His name is Stephen Whitehead. He is from Gray Woke and Spencer, and he's had a ton of wins lately on Fight the Fine, so you may have already seen him. But there's a little fun, not a twist, but uh, something that Mr. Whitehead did over and above And uh, it's really heartwarming, so you're not going to want to miss that. Here's Paul's story. And please continue to donate what you can at fightthefines.com. Well, I have two tickets here. The first one was November 28th last year, 2020. And they were simply going into a grocery store that I've been shopping in for years without a face covering. And uh, it was a long drawn out incident. The second ticket was at a protest in Creston and uh, it was on private property actually, the protest. And the ticket was for failure to obey the direction of a peace officer. Now, uh, this wouldn't be the first report we've covered from the Creston area. It seems like they took a very militant approach uh, to some of you exerting, you know, mask exemptions or the right to protest. So you've got these two fines. Um, Now, uh, we did help you through the fight, the fines. We've partnered with the Democracy Fund. So great people have come together to support people just like you and help provide with free legal counsel. We're going to jump to... Uh, Stephen Whitehead, the lawyer who helped you with one of your fines here. I say one before we jump to him because the other one ended up uh, not even so far uh, coming through the court system. Do you want to explain that? Correct. I I followed up on the first ticket when I didn't receive uh, any notice in the mail, which is what you get with all these tickets in BC because it's administered by ICBC. Yeah, they handed it off. <laughs> correct, correct. So I followed up with the uh, the clerk on that, and she explained to me that it does not appear to have been registered by the officer, uh, Constable Ryan Smith. So I asked her, well, what does that mean exactly, this many months after the fact? And she said, well, the officer is still free to register that ticket, but from her experience as a clerk, uh, he probably just threw it out. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So for whatever reason, we don't know. We don't know, and that sounds good to me. But the other fine, um, tell us uh, what happened. Like, what did it feel like to know that there's people in Canada who care about your situation enough to donate and and get you free legal counsel for this? Well, when I when I applied. Uh, for to for fight defiance through Rebel News, after uh, getting my tickets, 
quite honestly, I was like, well, whatever, you know, fill out the paperwork, see what happens. I didn't really expect much, but myself and many others in Creston, and I'll go so far as to say in BC, were pleasantly surprised when um, there was actually a lawyer forthcoming to defend our tickets in court at no expense to us. Um, I made a few donations to Rebel News, but I'm sure nothing even close to approaching what a lawyer from a reputable firm in Calgary would cost in the normal scheme of things. So yeah, it feels pretty good actually that uh, Rebel News was there for all of us, including myself. Yeah, it's an honor for me to work with Rebel News as well. And you're right, these lawyers are not cheap. Uh, no. So tell us <laughs> what happened uh, the court day when you show up for court. Just tell us a little bit about what happened that day. Uh, court day, I talked to uh, Stephen Whitehead the night before. He said he was driving to Creston from Calgary, which surprised me. And I'm like, okay, well, I'll see you at the courthouse. So September 24th, dawn, bright and sunny. And I met him down there. He was easy to spot with his suit and shiny shoes and nice tie. So I picked <laughs> him out of the uh, crowd rather quickly. And um, he said to me, I'm not sure if you're going to actually have to appear in court or not. Your case comes up this afternoon at 2.30. So I went home, sat by the phone. And then he phoned me. He said, yeah, you might as well come down to the courthouse because they're you're probably going to have to appear in court. So we get down there and there's, there's a few of us in the street um, lounging <laughs> against the wall, so to speak. And he went into the courthouse to uh, do his thing. And uh, he came back out and said the, the uh, ticket had been tossed, failure to prosecute. The officer didn't show up. Nice. And that was it. I never even actually set foot inside the courtroom. Well, there you go. Now we're going to jump to Stephen Whitehead as well. He had uh, something to say about his side, what happened in the courthouse, and then we'll come right back to you. Well, Paul was a great guy. I mean, let me just start by, uh, you know, he's a colorful personality and he was a lot of fun to work with. But in any event, um, you know, we, we showed up at the Crescent Courthouse. That's where his hearing was. And, you know, we, we managed to get a stay of proceedings entered uh, on his behalf after uh, speaking with the, with the Crown on site. So, um, you know, all was good for Paul. Um, you know, he was one of nine victories we had that day. I think we've already talked about those enough, though. <laughs> but anyway, it was, uh, you know, he was he was certainly part of the gang and, uh, you know, one of the more colorful ones. And so I really uh, I really appreciated the opportunity to represent Paul. And uh, I'm really happy everything kind of worked out for him. Well, it was a great win. And about the nine victories, actually, I don't think the viewers know how that came um, to because you came. Uh, to fight the fight with fines and you ended up helping others. So don't be modest, be, uh, touch on that a bit. Well, uh, yeah, I suppose we made some uh, some deals on the courthouse in terms of, uh, you know, quick retention. Uh, effectively, th this is actually an interesting issue um, because, you know, we face a lot of these issues going into courthouses and what the courthouse policies are. And those, of course, vary from courthouse to courthouse. So you never kind of know what you're going to show up with. And some people have... Um, medical exemption letters that are from, you know, guiding medical practitioners that are actually disregarded uh, in those circumstances. They say mask or get out. Um, so, you know, um, I take one for the team. I throw, you know, I throw my mask on and, and uh, you know, so that I can so that I can represent people and, and help them in these cases. So uh, in Creston, there was, there was a group of them. And this is, so some of them were, uh, I had met before and, and, and worked with uh, through Rebel News and a few of them I hadn't, but they were all, they were all connected uh, through their social circle or, or what have you in Creston. And so, you know, but they were, they were facing it where effectively, you know, the, the justice of the peace there just said, well, if you're not going to wear a mask, then this is going to be uncontested. It's going to go against your record. And so, you know, once advised of that, I said, you know, well, let me speak to the people outside. And they said, well, would you please go in and, and, and speak to them on our behalf? And so we, you know, we went ahead and did that. And uh, luckily it actually turned out for all three of them. Uh, we managed to get stays of proceedings in uh, all three matters with <laughs> all very little prep work. And, um, <clears throat> You know, knowing not too much about the case, but in but in any event, it, it worked out. It worked out for uh, people who needed us, so we were happy to do it. 
This is great news. Thanks to everybody who donated at fightthefines.com. And by the way, we're nowhere near done. Uh, There's many situations like this we haven't been able to report on because we've helped over 2,000 people through this. And everything you donate there uh, goes directly to the Democracy Fund charity that pays the legal fees and for the lawyers. So please continue to donate there because these cases are ongoing. Um, but let's talk a little bit about what you think about a um, the fact that you were uh, ch- you were fined for these things and the reality that here we are months later and it seems like you can still get in trouble for the same types of, of things. Well, here's a a little bit extended version of what happened with these tickets. The first ticket that I mentioned, I actually uh, took that incident and I filed with the Human Rights Tribunal in BC. Mm -hmm. And that took some time to come back to me, so to speak. They're quite quite busy right now. Mm -hmm. But on November 4th, I did have a mediation session with uh, the respondent, the uh, owner of the grocery store. Brian Pilo and his mm-hmm. lawyer, Jamie Lalonde. And the remedies that I, that I was asking for basically were a public apology and uh, a cash uh, compensation. Um, I wasn't really worried about the, uh, the cash compensation. It was more to get their attention than anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, the mediation, we came to an agreement uh, that they would put the proper signage in the store on the window s- s- outlining mask exemptions. That's the Human Rights Commission poster that clearly outlines mask exemptions. I'm sure yeah. all of us who are in the know have seen this. Yeah. And there was a, another poster. Um, it, it showed a family with very young children all masked. And I basically said, that has to come down because <laughs> those children are all six or seven years old yeah, they're very they're... small mm-hmm. so that that has to come down and um you know i want an apology all that kind of thing anyway make a long story short uh they put the sign up in the window uh that and that's about as far as it went mm-hmm. and i'm going to accept that i'm not going to pursue it any further uh to a full hearing for the simple reason that a i feel i've educated the store owner mm-hmm. B, uh, we're seeing that the Human Rights Tribunal filings in BC are all turning out to be, uh, they're turning out very poorly for us. Right. Well, yeah, I have a report coming up on that, uh, but uh, I suspect some of the ones uh, that may, might have come to a win are sort of being dealt with before they get to that position, but I'm still looking into that. So make sure you signed up for our our email notifications at rebelnews.com, but continue. So the, uh, like I said, I'm just going to accept the, uh, the sign on the window. That's good. I'm not going to pursue the full hearing. Uh, the second ticket, I didn't, uh, I didn't file any human rights, uh, filings on that. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I have filed two other human rights filings in, in British Columbia, and I suspect that I'm, now I'm really just pursuing to get the proper signage on the door. One would be a retail shop in Cranbrook, and then the other one would be the Regional District Central Kootenai Recreation Building in town. We all pay taxes on. And it took a lot of uh, teeth pulling and gnashing of teeth and wailing for me to go into that building three times a week to go swimming without a mask on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But now, I'm still trying to get proper signers there. Now, the sign that you're referring to, is that the one that uh, includes that, you know, mask exemptions are a thing on there? Is that included on the sign that they put up at the store? Uh, the one at the store is the actual BC Human Rights Commission poster. It's white and blue, I believe. And it says that uh, mask exemptions are to be respected if someone's not if someone says they can't wear a mask, you accept them at their word. Uh, this is the uh, what the poster basically says. Well, I think that is a success for sure. That's important. A lot of people didn't know that, including business owners early on. I think they just thought if the government didn't tell them that, it must not be a thing. But anyways, thank you so much for uh, your efforts towards that to help educate the public. 
And uh, what would you like to say to the people that donate to fight the fines uh, for your case? Well, to all the people who donated, including myself, uh, <laughs> thank you very much and continue donating. But more importantly, keep resisting because mm. that is the only way we're going to win this thing. And I can't stress this enough. I've spoken at a number of rallies. Uh, I'm pretty, uh, pretty firm on this. Take off your mask and just go out there and live your life without your mask. Most places you can get into and the ones that you really, really, really can't get into, believe me, they'll let you know. And you just don't go there. If you want to get into a, into a ticket scenario and filing with human rights, I mean, go ahead. If you, if you have the courage and the strength to do that, have at it. But otherwise, just take off your mask and live your life. Well, thank you so much for being on Rebel News today. Bye, Paul. And Yeah, bye, Drea. It's always great to do a feel-good report, especially during these times. Now, I hope you felt good watching this. And if you want to continue to support Rebel News, you can also do that by shopping at rebelnewsstore.com. There's lots of cool gear to get there, and you get to be the rebel at heart while keeping us being able to bring you the other side of the story. I'm Drea Humphrey for Rebel News.